guys, this is Alex with Tucker. In this video, we're going to show you how to change your filters on your fill and go. So here's how you change your pre filters on your fill and go. You're going to take your small wrench, filter wrench, and you're going to take out. Uh, we're going to take out our sediment right here first, and we're going to make sure we go the right way. So when, after time, you're going to need your wrench to loosen up that housing. But when you reinstall these, you're going to just hand tighten will be sufficient. And simply, you're just going to drop it in. You always want to ensure that you have your O-ring still inside. And as previously stated, just hand tighten would be sufficient. Next, we're going to change out your carbon filter with chloramine killer. Once again, make sure that O-ring is seated properly, and then we're just going to tighten this by hand. Next, you have your, your DI uh, cartridge that's inside. It's going to be that blue and white uh, filter. Be mindful of this. It's going to be full of water. It's going to be kind of heavy. When you dump this out with all the excess water that has in there, this gasket or this O-ring that sits up top, it's easy for that to follow to make sure that's still in place. Now this cartridge is uh, refillable. Uh, so if you live in, an, in a high TDS area where you're constantly changing out resin, then I would suggest instead of dropping a new one, you can take this out, dump the, uh, the old resin, and then refill it. In this case, we're just going to put a new one in. So you want to be mindful when you're uh, reinstalling your, your DI cartridge. This gasket uh, should be facing upwards. And it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little white arrow. You want that going up as it seats in here. And once again, make sure that O-ring sits good right there. So your most common filters that you're going to be changing will be your pre-filters. These are rated for 5,000 gallons on the carbon. The sediment, that's something that uh, you most likely might change out a little more often than that. It always depends on, on the usage. Uh, that's going to collect your major junk and debris. Uh, so if you ever notice a drop in, in, in flow, uh, and you know it's, you normally have good pressure, uh, most likely these filters are starting to get clogged. So this one you'll change a little more often. This one, like I said, is uh, rated for 5,000 gallons. Let's see, uh, 100, 100 tanks before you swap that out. Your DI, uh, once again, that is just based on your, your, your usage and the incoming TDS. So you can check your TDS meter, uh, which is on this side. Uh, so we recommend swapping out your resin at 10 parts per million because at 10 parts per million is when you can start seeing spotting on the glass. Next is the RO membrane. Now this is one that's going to be uh, an infrequent change out. Uh, so you, depending on uh, the water quality in your area, it could be a number of years before you're changing this out. So with this uh, one, you're actually going to be uh, pulling it out from here. This is where we, we load it in from at, at the factory. Uh, so there's a brine seal uh, that's on this side. And so we make sure that that's the last thing that goes in there. Because if you try to force it, go through the other way, or if you put the, the brine seal on the other side, what could happen is that brine seal could uh, fold over on itself and it could uh, mix your, your un, unfiltered water with the filtered water. So what you'll need for that is just a half inch socket and wrench. Typically I like to just do, take it off one end, and then you can kind of maneuver it away from there. Next I will disconnect the hose. These are push to fit. So there you go. And then you can just simply pull this out. And sometimes uh, the RO membrane will follow. 
you can see there's that brine seal that I was mentioning before. Now be aware there's going to be water in there. So in this case, um, this hasn't been sitting in there too long. And for the most part, uh, you're still going to have this lubricant that's still inside um, that would be sufficient. Um, but in case it maybe your system has been sitting around for a while, we do have available uh, for sale this uh, packet of Molly Coat. And if you will use this, um, what I would suggest, I don't have it on right now, but uh, I would suggest having glo uh, gloves. This is a packet of Molly Coat that we sell uh, by itself. Um, most likely you won't need to apply this um, in your system, but in case you do, this is how you do it. You wanna make sure you are coating the what's called the permeate tubes with it. Let's take that in. And you you have both these coated, and I'll show you why it would be um, a good idea to do so. Especially if the system has been sitting around for all. So internally, there are little O-rings that these slide into. And if it's too hard to go in because it's not lubricated, what could happen is you can actually pull these uh, internal O-rings out and they'll get just smashed down in there. And you're just not going to get uh, the proper filtering with those O-rings dislodged. So we're going to slide in there. We're going to make sure this is your brine seal. Uh, we don't want to uh, put it in this way. So what's going to happen is as you slide it in there, it's going to fold over on itself. And that's something you definitely don't want. So you want to make sure your brine seal is this way. And we're just going to slide this all the way in. And reinstall your hose. So this is the incoming from your pre-filters. So there you have it. Uh, this is a how-to video on how to change your filters on your Tucker filling gun.